We are live on air. We are live right now. All right, let's shuffle back in here. We have the home viewers that are ready to rock and roll. Hey, Chris. How you doing? All right, so who here is cool with like a one... 1.15-ish type of lunch time around there. Is that cool? All right. Sweet. So I'm going to hand the keys over to Wilson Matos here, and he is going to show you a couple, or tell you a couple things, I guess, here. And we're going to go for about an hour and a half. We'll probably do a half hour of questions. Yeah, because he's standing right next to me right now. Um, appreciate that. Uh, so we'll go about an hour and a half session with Wilson, and then we'll do about half hour of questions or so, then we're going to break for lunch. Then when we come back, we still got a lot a lot left to do today here, okay? So plan, plan on going hard until the end of the day today, okay? With that said, ladies and gentlemen, Wilson Matos! <laughs> All right, so I want to cover two things in this session. First, we're going to talk about the whole planning concept and forecasting your revenue because this is what it's about, forecasting revenue. And that will guide you to do the things you need to do to be successful. And then we're going to talk about that whole concept. I want to break down that ASM ranker so that when you leave here today, you're going to have a very clear picture of how to leverage the power of AS, the ASM ranker tool that we gave you and when to use it, when not to use it, what its purpose is, how it works, and all of that. So I want this to be a very interactive section. Session. About, I think it was about a year and a half ago, or maybe it was six months ago, I'm getting my years confused. Um, I was presenting at, a, at, at an event called the Earn 1K a Day event in Las Vegas. And I did a whole presentation on this concept of planning your success and planning by the numbers and running your business by the numbers. And at the end of my session, a guy comes to me, shakes my hand and said, that's where I learned it from because I'm in your six and six coaching program and I built a million dollar business just doing exactly what you taught me. And that guy was Bruce. Yeah. So, did you build a million dollar business based on running the stuff by the numbers? Perfect. So you have live proof here that what I'm going to share with you works. Now, is it intuitive, Bruce? Does it completely make sense right out of the gate? Did you believe it from like day one? He didn't, right? That's, and, and I don't blame him because how can I sit here, how can I stand here and tell you that you can know next month exactly how much money you're going to make? Doesn't it sound too good to be true? Because what's our tendency to do with that knowledge or with that belief or with that, that hope? What's our tendency? We don't believe it because of what Jason said earlier in the previous session. You're going to set a goal saying, great, then I'm going to make $20,000 a month, right? And that is not a realistic target. So a whole part of this or one of the most important part of this is setting realistic goals. And those goals need to be a stretch, and they need to continue to evolve, they need to continue to increase, because you can't increase your business, you can't make more money, like Jason said, doing the same exact thing every month. Right? You're always needing to add something, whether it's you're going to add a new product, you're going to add a new promotion, you're going to send an extra email, you're going to write an, an, an additional Facebook post, or, or do another Facebook advertising campaign. You have to do something different. You have to do something incremental to see incremental changes. So what I'm going to tell you here works. We have been following the same exact process, and with this exact process, we've built a $4.2 million a year business from zero in just three years. This process got us from zero to $1.8 million in 12 months. 
This process got us to over $3 million in year two, and this process kept us growing to form over $4 million in year three. This is the process that is going to build us a $1 million per year business on Amazon in 12 to 13 months. And you can follow the same exact process to achieve whatever number you want to achieve. But I will tell you that the great majority of you are not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. It's unfortunate. So I'm going to try and get as many of you to believe as possible. In order for that to happen, you need to interact with me and you need to ask questions. I will ask that you please raise your hand. We have a mic runner, a volunteer, who's going to send the mic around so the people on the stream can get the benefit of the question as well as the answer. So here's the first phase of the process. Phase one is you have to set a goal. Set a goal. How much money, and I'm talking about financial goals. I'm talking strictly numbers, dollars and cents or pounds or euros or whatever it is your currency is, okay? Set a goal. Then you have to create a plan to achieve that goal. What does that plan consist of? How many units I'm going to sell? How I'm going to sell those units? How many ads do I have to run? What's the profitability that I have to get from those ads? If you have an email list, are you going to send one email, two emails, three emails? What are those emails going to do? And you break down that plan on a daily basis at first. As you grow, you won't be able to do it daily anymore. But at first, you need to do it on a daily basis because that has another side effect. It will keep you focused. When you know what the plan is and the direct impact of the plan on your goal, to your goal, then there's no question about it. You're not going to go chase another shiny object. You're going to say, oh, I saw this other piece of software. I'm going to go play with it, see if it gives me more traffic. No, because you already have a plan. You know what you're going to do. So if you have a plan of making $1,000 a month, I need you to break that plan down. I need you to break that goal down into activities that you're going to do every single day to achieve that will go towards that $1,000. How many of you think you can do that? Okay. So you're going to take, I, we use a spreadsheet. 30 days, 29, 30, 31 days, however many days in that month, right? And every single day you need to do something that will further your objective of achieving $1,000 in revenue for that month. Give me an objection. Somebody's got an objection. Let's get the mic over there, please. Give me an objection. What's wrong with that? What am I missing? What is Will not telling you? Press, press the button so it goes green. Don't know what actions will translate into what money. Okay, number one objection. Thank you for bringing it up. I don't know what actions are going to translate into what kind of money. You need to think of your actions a little bit differently than you do today. Because, how many of you have been in internet marketing for a while, dabbling at it, trying, doing blogging and Facebooking and Twittering and all that stuff, right? A lot of you have been doing that for a long time. We're not accustomed to thinking about actions translating into direct results. We're accustomed to saying, I'll write this blog post and I hope it gets ranked. And then maybe I'll do this YouTube video that points to this blog over here so maybe people can come read it, right? What other action could we do instead that would directly drive some revenue? Okay, you can advertise. That's one way. So Jason gave you a pretty decent formula to getting some, some revenue via advertising. He hasn't painted the complete picture yet, but between this what else we're going to talk about today, there will be a better picture. Okay. You need to start thinking of ways that your actions are not going to be hopeful attempts. Because writing a blog post, putting a Facebook this, building a fan page, creating a video, writing a, a, um, writing a uh, news advertise, press release, right? Those, it's very difficult at first for you to know what you're going to achieve from those. But let's, let me take something and make it more tangible for you. Because it's so much easier with this 
concept of physical products that we're working with right now than it is for something intangible like information products and software and stuff in our other business. This is going to be so much easier, to tell you the truth, to do this planning with. And you may not think so. How many of you don't believe it yet? Come on, raise your hands. None of you believe it yet. I know. Okay. But what action could you do? You have a physical product. You have a physical product that you own. It is your brand. What could you do to generate revenue out of it? Strict question. Sell it. How can you sell it? You don't rank well on Amazon yet. So what are you going to do to rank well on Amazon? Okay, you're going to drive traffic, you're going to do Facebook ads, you're going to write press releases, whatever. What else could you possibly do to sell that product? Go to a flea market. What else could you do? What? Door-to-door -door sales. You could do that. What else could you do? How many of a pay-per-click? Okay, so how many of you would go to do door-to-door -door sales? The truth. Okay, how many of you would go to a flea market or a swap meet, as they call it in some places? How many of you would do that? Why not? No, 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 no. So we're going to change that thinking. You do whatever it takes to achieve that goal, that financial target. If it takes you going and standing somewhere and selling your product, then you do it. You do it. You see, the problem that most people have with this concept of forecasting and making money and planning for success is they, they are too proud to make money. I'm serious. They are too proud to make money. I'll give you a ridiculous example. If I told one of you, hey, listen, I have this job. It's going to take you a whole week to do. A whole week. You're going to work eight hours a day. I'll pay you 10 bucks. How many of you, how many of you would do it? I'll pay you 50 bucks. How many of you would do it? Now let me ask you a question. How many of you have worked an entire week on your internet marketing business and made zero dollars? <laughs> What's wrong with that, folks? What's wrong with that thinking? We're too proud to make money, right? So what we need to do in order for this process to work is to get rid of that emotional stuff. We plan by the numbers, we live by the numbers, we execute by the numbers. If I just need 50 bucks, and that's all that it's going to take for me to either achieve my goal or fail, I'm going to do, within my power, and within the, the law, I'm going to do what it takes to go sell this and make that 50 bucks. I've done this, and our num we've never, ever, ever missed our numbers. But has it come to the last day of the month and we're $10,000 short of our $200,000 goal or $300,000 goal? How many times has it been, Jason, where we've been like the last day is like, we got to do something because we're not going to miss this damn number. We do not. We will never miss our number, period. That's not an option in our minds, right? So we get together in the morning, we brainstorm. It's like, well, you know what? We, we have this product. We know these people may be interested in licensing this product. We start getting on the phone. Hey, you want to license this product? We'll give you a special deal. We'll do this. Hey, $10,000 appears. By the, by the way, the conversation always starts with me saying it's not possible. Jason, it, Jason, hates, Jason absolutely hates the process. And you will, too. Hating the process is part of the process. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. So we hated the process, and then I started hating the process because it became more and more difficult to make the big numbers. So we hired a CFO. Now she runs the process. Now she beats us down to, do, to make it happen. It's that important. No, I, I joke a little bit, but it's that important. Okay? We went out and hired a chief financial officer for Rapid Crush Inc. for the primary purpose of giving this process continuity because we had some months where we kind of sort of neglected the process a little bit and those months were really hard for us to make the number. We got too busy and you kind of got sidetracked and you start doing some other things and things are going well and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what happened here? The ship is sinking. Let's get the water out of the boat, right? And then we're like, you know, this happened because we stepped away from the process. So we went out and we hired a CFO because this is so important. So I'm telling you. So thing number one that you have to change in your mind is there is no emotion 
to it. There isn't, there isn't like, I don't like to do this, or I don't like to do that, or that's beneath me. I won't do it. There's nothing that gets done in my business that either Jason or I wouldn't be more than willing to do. We never ask an employee to do something that we ourselves wouldn't do. Right? So how many of you would go door to door selling your product? Okay, I got a few converts. All right. Now, am I telling you to go sell your product door to door? No, I'm not telling you to do that. Am I tell, telling you to go set up shop at a flea market or a swap meet? you know, on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning. I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you to do is think outside of the box. Think outside of the box. Where else can this play a role? So Facebook advertising is not working for you. Maybe you're extremely shy and you would never consider approaching somebody at a mall or at a store or at a school or somewhere, right? Maybe you can hire a teenager for a few bucks an hour Give them an iPad and say, hey, we're launching this new product. This is vitamin C product. Would you like to buy? It's just a dollar if you buy it today. We have a special today. It's just a dollar. Here's my iPad. You can go to Amazon right now and buy it. Use an ASM ranker tool link, right? Could you do things like that? See, we get caught into this whole concept of, Oh, only Facebook advertising is going to work because that's the only thing they taught us to do to get paid traffic. Or I'm very good at AdWords, so that's all I'm going to do. Or ASM taught us to create YouTube videos, so let's go create a whole lot of YouTube videos. So start. there are things, folks, that you will do that you will see returns in the future. So I'm not telling you don't do YouTube videos. I'm not telling you don't write press releases. I'm telling you that those cannot be your sole activities because that's kind of like tossing it out there and praying, right, and hoping it happens. I'm telling you to plan specifically for things that are going to make you money. We teach this concept in our 6 and 6 coaching. We've been teaching it for two years. And when we first started teaching this process, it wasn't related to one specific business because it was open to whatever business they wanted to run, right? But we taught the concept of set these goals, create a plan, and be open-minded when you create the plan. And so I mentioned in one of the webinar trainings, like, hey, you know what? If you have to bake a cake to make 20 bucks, bake a cake and sell the cake, right? And then people, that, that started a whole discussion of like, well, I'm in this to create a business. I don't want to go baking cakes, you know, for my neighbors. And it was like, they missed the point, right? The point was, what are the things that you can do to make money? Now, there are so many implications to this whole concept of not being too proud to make money and thinking outside the box. For example, let's say that you don't have money right now to buy inventory. Your first goal should be to get enough money to buy inventory. What can you do to buy inventory? You can't sit in front of your computer and buy more info products to get money to buy inventory, can you? Are you going to look for the next magic button so they can get a lot of money? Well, if you're going to start looking there, you've already abandoned your Amazon business, right? So what are the things that you can do today or tomorrow or this week sometime to go make an extra 100 bucks? How many of you can think of a way that you could make 100 bucks by Sunday? Let's say if you were at home. Within three days, could you make 100 bucks? What's that? Yeah, you can make money doing stuff for other people here. How many of you do not know how to build a landing page that we talked about? Do not know how. Okay. How many of you know how? Uh, keep your hands up. Those of you that know how, how many of you could use an extra 50 bucks towards inventory? Do, how many of you that don't know how would pay them 50 bucks for them to do it for you? This 500 bucks and Rand says that that's already up for grabs. Who's going to grab it? And, and there are a lot of shy people who would pay you that are not raising their hands, right? Because they're too shy. Are you starting to see kind of how this works? How many of you are too proud to make money? How many of you would be willing to go sell door to door? Damn, this, they're still too proud to make money. Now, again, I'm joking, right? I'm not telling you to go sell door to door. But there are ways that you can do, that there are things that you can do if you just set your mind to it. So a huge part of this process, besides setting the goal, 
in order to create the plan is to think outside of the box. What can we do differently? Like Jason said, he said so many times, you can't achieve better results by, keep, by continuing to do the same thing. You always have to step up your game, do something different. It's that extra promotion. It's that additional product that you're going to source. It's that additional sell you're going to have. It's that swap meet you're going to go to, John, to, to, to have more sales, right? It's all of that information. It's all of those things that you're going to continuously do. So you create, you set a goal, and then you create a plan. And your plan has to be very specific, very specific. If I do this, it will generate that. If I do this, it's going to generate that. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot, okay? Again, I want to generate $1,000 in revenue a month. Break that down. Divide that by 30. How much is that? About $33 or so a day? Is that right? Did I do my math right? $33, $34 a day, right? So what could you do every day to just get 30 some dollars? Does it have to be selling your product on Amazon, by the way? Does it have to be doing that, selling it on Amazon? Uh, let's get the mic. Oh, go ahead. I'll repeat the question. Yep. So you can contact groups that are specific to the niche. Again, you know, think about very specific actions that you can do that will generate a very specific amount of money. So you may not know if that's going to generate. But should you also have activities that are experimental in this whole process? Of course you should. That's going to give you those, that incremental growth, right? So do I spend all day long working on just that one thing that's going to generate me $33? No, I do that thing as quickly as possible. Hopefully, it'll take me less than an hour to do. And that, if I'm going to work on, work an eight-hour day, maybe I have seven hours left to experiment, to try, to maybe get ahead of the number by doing the next three days' worth of activities that would generate me money. So you set a goal. Let's repeat. You set a goal, and then you create a plan. The plan needs to be specific. This action will generate me this much. What may happen when you create a plan and you add up all the amount of money that you're going to make? Darn, it can't satisfy the goal. This will happen more as the number grows, right? Like, I want to make 10,000. My plan only sustains four to 5,000. What do I do? Well, you evaluate the goal. Was the goal realistic to begin with? Right? Maybe the goal wasn't realistic. If I'm doing zero today, it's possible to do 10 next month, but maybe it's not very realistic. Maybe we've got to step the goal down a little bit, right? Or you continuously evaluate the plan. We have very clear goals. Our goals are set. Our growth rate is set. Everything is set. So our, we can't, we, in our business, we don't go change the goal. We keep working the plan. Nope, you can't do that. I'd love to promote this, this product next month, but it's not going to generate enough revenue, so I can't promote this product. I'd love to launch a $30 product next month to get more leads into the funnel, but that's not going to generate enough revenue, so I've got to launch the $100 product instead, right? We do the numbers. So you can add up everything that you're going to do in the plan, and then the next step in the process is you track. Every single day, you're going to evaluate, did this activity generate this revenue? Did this activity generate this number of sales? And then if it did, great, you achieved that. Can you do more of that? Or do you have to go make up somewhere? So your plan may change slightly as you go along because some things didn't go exactly as planned. Some things went way better than the plan. Okay, does that make sense? So let's let's try and do an exercise here. Um, who wants to volunteer? John's going to volunteer. John, uh, let's give John the microphone, please. John, what's your goal for for uh, February of 2014? Your 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 financial goal? Twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. So how much is that per day? Uh. Forty dollars a day. You're only going to work five days a week. Okay, so that's another part of the plan. Can everybody work 
seven days a week, every single day of every month of every year. It's, no, it's sixty dollars. You, you got a plan, day. right? You got a plan. So let's say, let's be conservative. I like to be conservative in my plan, right? Aggressive yet conservative. I have to be very realistic. So, so you're going to do sixty dollars a day. Sixty dollars. So day, twenty yeah. days, sixty dollars a day. So what's activity number one? You're going to do on February first. I'm assuming that's a weekday. February first to a, to make sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. All right. What I will do first of all is call all my friends that uh, can use my product. Okay. And I will sell that product. I will also at the same time start doing Facebook ads and okay. driving. Well, I'll have the Facebook ads. Okay. Stop right account. there. He's going to call all his friends. Okay. How many friends is that, John? Two, three. <laughs> One. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're, I'm calling you. You're calling me. Right? <laughs> I'll give you the whole six. You're done. All right. So you're gonna call your friends uh, is, is, uh, to, to buy your product, right? Yes. What are you gonna but, tell them? But here's the thing. I'm I'm already working on selling my product, and I haven't even got it yet. So. You're already working on selling. Your Let's not get ahead of it. Let's right. stick with the plan, though. So you okay. think? I know we don't have a computer in front of us. Some of you do. Let's think of it in a spreadsheet format. Like day one, I'm gonna mm -hmm. do this, and what's it gonna generate? Okay, day one. So how much does your product sell for? We have to be very specific here, right? How many how much does your product sell for? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars, right? So if you're talking revenue, like just the, the gross amount that comes in, how many do you have to sell that day to your friends? Four. Gross. Oh, gross two. Okay, yeah. so if he wants to generate $60, $60 in gross revenue, he needs to sell two. So you call up friend number one, doesn't answer. You call up friend number two, doesn't answer. What do you do? Call up friend three. You keep calling. How many friends maybe do you have to call to make those two sales? Probably have to call 10. 10, okay. And what if it was 20? Would you do it? Sure. Okay. Do you see what's happening here? So it's some very simple example, right? But John is going to continue working his plan until he achieves the success that he needs, right? Now, it's possible that John's number is blacklisted and he has no friends. <laughs> it's possible, right? Is it possible? Can, can we make that stretch? John is a nice guy. I know him. He's got lots of friends. But it's possible that his friends are going to think he's a scammer. They're not going to buy it, or they'll tell you they're going to buy it. They're not, whatever, right? It's possible that John doesn't make any sales. What's going to happen, John, if you don't make any sales on day one? Double up on day two. Follow up on day two. On day two, how much money do you have to make? $120. $120, bucks, right? That's right. Because no matter what, by the end of the month, you're going to make $1,200, bucks, right? Right. And if day two, you only made 60 bucks, what's going to happen on day three? Then you make 120 on day you three. Make it, you're, you're carrying that 60 around, right? Yeah. So maybe you have, maybe after a couple of days and you're not making that extra 60, what are you going to do at that point? Change. Do, do, do something else. Reevaluate your plan. Do you have to change your plan slightly, right? Because your plan may have been very solid for making 60 a day, but it may not support on any given day 120. But do you really have to make 120 in a day? What if you made 65 for the next few days? You make up five bucks at a time. This is very simple math, right, guys and gals? You it's simple math. Everybody following? And you may be thinking, well, come on, I can do that kind of math, right? But believe me, when you get in front of it and you try to plan, I'm trying to drill it into your heads that this is so simple, but yet you have to do it. Because it's so simple, a lot of people neglect it because how could this possibly help, right, Bruce? How could this possibly build your million-dollar business? How could this possibly build Jason and I a $4 million business? It does. There are things besides the numbers going on that we could spend days talking about, but we won't, that are psychological effects that will make things happen for you. Because when you are looking at that plan and you are achieving it at 90%, your brain is going to work overtime subconsciously 
to figure out how to get that damn 10% that you're missing. When we're three days till the end of the month and we've done everything that we can do to reach our numbers and we're not there yet, three days in, we'll have a call and we say, this is not possible, this sucks. We're going to miss our number. Then the next morning with two days left, we suddenly have the magic plan that will make it happen. I'm not kidding. This has happened many times. You have to believe in the process and know that it's going to happen. So John, now you're gonna now you're you're making your plan, so you call a couple of friends. What else can you do? I can go to the swap meet sell it. You can go to the swap meet and you sell it. I, I sold door to door insurance. You sold door to door, so you're door. cool with that. I can go right? door to door. What is another way of selling your product that some of you that don't want to go to a swap meet and go door to door, door can do? Let's say uh, you're selling a beauty product. What can you do? All right, go to a beauty store, give them a commission, uh, sell you sell these, or buy them. At, at you a have account. a physical product that has real value. You have a brand that nobody else has. It's unique. They can't just go to Walmart or Target and buy your stuff. Maybe someday they will, right? <laughs> yeah. But today they can't just go buy it somewhere, right? So you have something unique. So John can go, let, let's say he's selling in the beauty space, he can go to a beauty salon or a beauty supply store and speak with a couple of managers and say, would you like to do this on consignment? I won't even charge you anything, just put there. I re if I'll, I'm willing to sell it for 10 bucks, right? You, you mark it up however much you want, I'll come back in a week, right? Yeah. Now you start learning. See, this process is going to build upon itself because you will start learning what sorts of activities will generate how much. Like if he goes, if he calls 10 friends, he makes two sales. He starts getting a metric. So you also need to start thinking as you grow the business at the, in, in these types of metrics. I first learned this many years ago listening uh, to an internet marketer who used to be an insurance salesman. And selling insurance, insurance companies have very, very solid like sales processes. They have systems to sell. And they can tell you if you call 100 people, you will sell X number of policies, right? And so he learned this very early on. If you made 100 calls, let's say he would make $10,000 a month, right? If you wanted to do $20,000 a month, what does he have to do? Make 200 calls. It's super simple. So today you may not have, somebody mentioned earlier, somebody came and asked, like, will you teach us if we don't have our metrics yet, right? Today you may not have the metrics. Today you may not have the exact metrics. I have to be careful where I stand here. I'm too loud. Okay, Jason will come fix that problem. Um, today you may not have the exact metrics. It doesn't mean you can't go through this process. It just means you have to be much more creative about the process, which is good. Being creative is good. You may not know how many friends it takes, how many calls you have to make to friends to buy to to make. That, uh, to make two sales, John, but you certainly know that if you make enough calls, at some point you will make two sales. Does that make sense? He's not throwing out, can you still hear me okay in the back? He's not throwing out a blog post and hoping that people come read it and maybe, you know, there'll be a conversion of X percent. He knows for sure that some of his friends are nice enough that they will buy his product, whether for full price or for a dollar or for whatever, right? So can you think, who can think of another activity and make it real, make it real to you, like you could do it for your product that would generate two sales or three sales or however many. That's not, not like, not Facebook, not blog posts, not whatever. What could you do? Say for instance, it was something like this, sorry. Say for instance, it was something like the skincare, you could perhaps have a little party. Okay, hey, perfect idea. Okay, I, I'll repeat it. If it was skincare, how many women have been no, invited to no. those parties or they do demonstrations yeah, and then party. they sell products? Right? Right? Uh, Tupperware. Tupperware no, is that, is that the, 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 fish, the original thing, Tupperware parties? That's right? what a webinar is. It's just a virtual Tupperware party. Webinar is a virtual Tupperware party. So you can do a party, invite some of your closest friends and show them how awesome this product is, right? And then ask them, hey, do you want to do a party, right? We'll do a little massage thing in your hands and put the nice little cream and lotion and make it smell good. We'll have some little wine and stuff or whatever, right? 
I forbid my wife from going to those parties. <laughs> she always buys. She never uses. <laughs> I have all kinds of stuff in the garage. <laughs> so, okay, another. somebody mentioned something else. Uh, yeah, uh, what about um, using that website, uh, Nextmark, and get an email list and send three emails out to a certain amount of people? Uh, Nextmark? I'm not familiar with this. Yeah, Nextmark, it's a... To, okay, it's building a list market. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but again, that's too too long of a process. It's something that you would do. Well, he's saying, saying buy an email list. Oh, email buy file. an email list. Okay, buy an email list. Yes, possibly. Again, you know, you, yeah, maybe. It's going to cost you money to do it, right? So you got to have investment money. Now, uh, one more way. Somebody mentioned go, eBay. Yeah. Go on eBay. Sell eBay or Craigslist. EBay. Try eBay, right? Yeah. School fundraisers. Wow, that's a cool one. School fundraisers, you know, like some of the profits go to the school, right? That's a that's a possible way. So now you're thinking outside the box, right? If you're a small town, your your paper will write an article on you. If you're a small town, your paper will write an article on you? Yes. I saw a product uh, which was interesting, it was on Groupon. Oh they, man, they Group, did a Groupon. Ton. Yeah, Groupon. Be careful with Groupon because most people on Groupon lose a lot of money. It's very expensive to get on Groupon. Most people don't realize you have to pay them, and the prices have to be so low that you're probably going to lose money. And you can't just say, "Okay, Groupon, a hundred units." Can't limit it. You can't run that way. So you're going to. It's very expensive. Be very careful with Groupon. Um, what's that? Print media, right? Could you print out some little flyers, flyers and hand them yeah. out, right? Special this, one dollar, whatever, right? The point is, the point is that if you allow, and it's and it's hard for you to come up with ideas now because I'm putting you on the spot and making you come up with ideas. But if you allow yourself to think outside the box, I guarantee you by tomorrow morning you will have ideas of how you could sell your product in non-traditional ways. And by non-traditional, I mean like outside of Amazon with Facebooks and news uh, ads and all that stuff, right? If you needed to make X number of sales a day, you could. Okay? Go ahead. Wilson, when you say Groupon, do you mean all the deal sites work the same way? No. No. Um, Jason, cover the deal sites because you've been doing some research on that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pop on up here. Uh, deal sites are a gold mine, by the way, for the same reason that yard sales work in a sense, right? Because what's the common denominator that everybody has? What's going on here? Strange. Hang out on Airwolf, and if you continue broadcasting content, you aren't authorized to use. <laughs> they must be keying on something that I'm uh, that I'm uh, saying. Strange, right? Yeah. Anyway, is it still live? Yes. Yeah, it's, still, yeah, it's live. still live. All right. Good. All right. Here, you're gonna have to scoot over so I can talk. Uh, see, I just get right to the point, right? That's, I mean, that's how you got to treat the business. You just say, Psh, this is what we're going to do. So deal sites, think about it from this aspect. What is the commonality of every single person uh, on the deal site? What do they have in common? They're bargain hunters, right? We, yeah, looking for a deal. I, so that's the one commonality they have. So then we just ask ourselves, is it realistic for us to be able to infiltrate this deal site, in a sense, to achieve our objective, whatever our objective is? So what's the objective with Groupon? What's, what's the goal that most people use Groupon for? Yeah, get new customers, right? Which is horrible, because Groupon's going to take all your money. They're going to send you some of the worst customers you'll ever have, right? You're exclusively locked into Groupon. Right? For that specific deal, you can't be running any other deal during that time, right? Yada, yada, yada. On and on and on. So Groupon sucks for that particular aspect. But let's just say, is there a way potentially we could do a, a, a different type of offer on the front end of Groupon and get 5,000 buyers of that and build a list from that and then on the back end market our Amazon product, right? Possible, is it? Would it make sense with your plan to achieve at the end of the month your number and your goal and how many sales you need to make? Probably not, right? But if it's something where I hit the number already, and this is the extra experimental stuff I want to do because I have extra time this month, I could play with it and maybe get a breakthrough that way, right? So Groupon, no. But then you start looking at some of these other deal sites. 
And yes, there are some. I can't, I can't give the name. One of, somebody in this room, two people in this room have turned me on to this deal site. You probably know it. I just don't want to call it out because I don't know if I have permission. But there are certain deal sites out there that will make the parameters work, right? Even at profit. There are certain deal sites that you can give your product away on at a certain discount where you're still making profit on it. Uh, so, so it becomes fun to experiment again. Let's play with the numbers, right? Let's say I want to make 300, uh, let's say I want to make $100 a day, right? And we have a deal site where we can make $1 profit on our product when it's all said and done, okay? One measly thin dollar on this thing. But this deal site seems to support us being able to move 100 units a day at a dollar. Is it worth it? Damn right it is. It's funny when I get giddy and excited about making $100 a day from one platform. And I'll tell you why. Because if I can set it up and that thing will just run like clockwork $100 a day, I can put that in our forecast for the month. Boom, there's 3,000 less dollars we have to worry about. Jason's a happy boy, right? And so when you're approaching a deal site, you either ask, can I make it work using the non-conventional means since I can't work it in the normal constraints that it provides, right? Or can I find a other deal site that will help me achieve the number that I need to achieve and then make it worthwhile? And so, uh, I mean, there's so many good strategies that I don't know if I'm authorized to share or not. Uh, but just think about this way. Where are ways and places that you can find pockets of people who are looking for a deal with moderators or gatekeepers that control those audiences, right? that you can work out a deal. So instead of having to go one to one to one to one, we can go to one to one to many, right? So that's what I think of with those deal sites. And so then you have to evaluate it. So it, it all makes sense with your plan and what you think you can get away with and what you can negotiate for those deal sites. So yeah, don't kill all deal sites. You know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Yeah, so you're going to have to experiment a little bit, learn a little bit, and then you will have more tools with which to create those plans, right? You will have more tools. So if you learn of a deal site, but will you will you will it in your plan to make money? Will deal sites today be on there? Like will it be right there on one of your plans? I'm gonna make this much from this deal site? Probably not, because you don't have those numbers yet. You don't know. But will it be an activity that you do after you sell it to both of your friends? Yes. And it may be a great activity, it may generate you $500 and you're way ahead of plan or it may not generate anything but that's okay because you already sold your two friends those products John right okay so when I, I'm not gonna keep picking on John he has been a great uh, volunteer uh, do you folks understand how many of you understand this concept of set a goal plan specifically right and then potentially adjust the plan or the goal right now the one thing you don't do, by the way, after you after you have a set in stone, after you have a plan to make a twelve hundred dollars, John, your goal is twelve hundred dollars. You've created the plan that supports the twelve hundred dollars. On February fifteenth, you don't go like, well, I'm going to adjust my goal. I'm only going to make seven hundred. That goal is set in stone because you had a real, a very realistic plan to achieve it. So if it's not working, you got to keep working the plan now, not the goal, because otherwise you're in that mode of like, I want to make ten thousand. Well, I only make 500, so on February 28th, I'll just change my goal to 500. Doesn't work, right? That's not going to happen. So then, the next step of that, and we have a question over there. Uh, the next step of that is going to be every single month, you got to step up your game. So, John, if your goal is 1,200 in February, what's your goal going to be in March? 1,500 potentially, right? 1,500. And can you create a plan that is realistic to achieve 1500 in March? I believe that you can. So if you tell me how much money do you want to make in a year in your business, what is the first step that you have to do? Break it down to a month at a time, right? And then after you have that monthly number, what do you do? You break it down. You see how it's like maybe very difficult to make a thousand bucks to think oh, I'm going to make a thousand dollars, but it's not really difficult to think I'm going to make thirty-three dollars a day. It's not very difficult, right? 
you can make a couple of affiliate commissions here, do that, you know, sell a couple of units, call a couple of friends up, right? It's not very difficult. If you called two friends and the first two answered the phone and they bought from you, and you have ten friends, right? You're done for the day. What do you do that day, John, the rest of the day? Why don't you call the other eight, John? I wouldn't call the other eight. I wouldn't. I'm done for today. I am going to then spend the rest of that day working on those other things that I need to learn about. Can I investigate a deal site? Can I do that? Now, the next day, your plan was to sell two units door to door, and boy, you knocked on 100 doors, didn't work, right? What do you do? Call two friends. You know that worked. See, you already have metrics on friends. The friends metric is really good. Sinking in? Making sense? It's super simple. It's so simple that it's almost silly that I'm here telling you this stuff. Right? Do you agree with me? But most people don't do it. Because it's so silly, it couldn't possibly work, right? Bruce couldn't possibly have built a million dollar business on this very same concept, could he? It works, folks. You gotta do it. Okay? Uh, there was a question over here. Yes. I just wanted to ask. Um, when you have a product on Amazon, you're allowed to sell other places? When you have a product on Amazon, you are allowed to sell any other place you would like, yes. The reason I ask is because in, in one of, I think it was in this group, where I've been approached several times by international buyers that sit, go on Amazon and then they want to buy my product so they come to me direct. Yeah. And then I read in the forum people telling me that I'm not allowed to sell it to them. Is that not true? Don't believe everything you read. <laughs> well, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, it's your product, it's your brand. Amazon is just a marketplace. They don't you don't you don't sign an exclusivity deal with Amazon, right? Okay. You sign exclusivity deals with Groupon, right? Uh, but you don't if you're going to do that route, but you don't have any exclusivity deals. In fact, uh, you could sell elsewhere and have Amazon fulfill for you. Have you ever thought about that? There are a lot of people that make a lot of money, for example, selling on eBay and then just import the orders into Amazon, the Charlotte Central account, and have FBA fulfill those orders for them. It's a beautiful thing, right? It's awesome. You, don't, you still don't have to touch inventory to sell anywhere else. You can do that on your own website, too, if you set up an e-commerce shop, right? You gonna set up an e-commerce shop, John, next week? Probably not. No, you're not. You gotta follow the system, right? The system is here, the system works. We've proved it to ourselves. Matson has proved it to himself. Lots of tests. Tess was just telling me, where's Tess? Tess is right there. So Tess, on the first or on the second of January, or your first thousand dollars, right? And then three days later, a day and a half later, two thousand dollars. We are now uh, fourteen days after now. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, question, sorry. Okay, my question is about setting the financial goal. Whenever Jason was talking about being, I forget what the number was, something thousand in the hole, are we planning for that number? Are we planning net numbers or gross numbers? Excellent. Are you planning net numbers or gross numbers? That is a good question. Um, we run our business based on net numbers, okay? But the net numbers don't have to be here today for us. And it probably won't be because of the system that we're using. Um, the system of, of getting buying product and selling it for a buck. If we're all going to do that, we're all going to lose money, right? So we're going to plan on number of units, perhaps. We're going to plan on gross revenue, not on profit. Um, you do need to get your business. You do need to start thinking about net profit. That's how you need to achieve your plan. You do need to start working on net profit. Now, in our case, we are doing net profit in the future. I don't suggest you do that. I suggest you start thinking about net profit right away. And this is why I'm telling you to think outside the box. Because just because you are going to be losing money by selling products for a dollar doesn't mean you have to be in the hole at the end of the month. It means your net number may be small, even though you're selling a lot of units. Does that make sense? So you may sell 100 units at a loss, 
could you sell 100 units at a profit to balance that out? Does that that's, that's what I'm saying. So you need to look at your net number because it doesn't matter if I sell $100,000 worth of product. If it costs me two hundred dollars to do it, I'm going to go broke. Right? So we, always, we run our numbers. They're always net. Yeah, net is deceiving, by the way. Net is very deceiving. Because how do you track every single step? Yeah. <laughs> That becomes a different problem that ties into cash flow and uh, some other advanced strategies. And uh, you can certainly ask me about that. I'm not going to go into it because, again, I'm not going to do a three-day course here on this stuff. It's stuff that we've evolved over the years. But if you just do what, I, I'm, what I'm telling you here, um, and then the next step of that is knowing what your expenses are, right? Knowing what all of your expenses, not just the product expenses, but how much do you, do you spend on do you have do you have to have a website? How much you spend on your hosting account? Do you have an Aweber account? What's the seller central cost? Because that's a fixed cost every month. Knowing all of your fixed costs, so you take your net number and you subtract and, and net I mean by product sales net, not net net, um, and you subtract all those numbers, all of your expenses that you have for your business. What is that true net number going to be? That's going to stay in your bank account. And by the way, it becomes easy to figure it out just by feel to get the, get it pretty close because um, you get it what's called a net operating profit margin. So we say if we do 150 different things with our expenses and what we typically make depending on what we do, if we average on X 31%, right, we're good. So if we have a million dollars and we do 31%, we make 300,000. So some things are going to net higher than others, but overall, if you can get a good gauge on what that net's going to come out to then you can plan very effectively from mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and so the next, you know, there, there, you will start, you have to, you have to do numbers, okay? Everybody understand that you have to do numbers. I don't care how much you hate math or how much you hate spreadsheets. You have to do some very simple math. If you can't, if you're not willing to do some simple math, it's going to be very difficult for you to succeed and grow your business. You have to do some simple math. You got to know how much it costs. You got to know how much you're going to sell it for so that you know what your profit is going to be, right? So you got to be able to do that. Um, lost my train of thought on that one. Somebody's phone's ringing. Hello. <laughs> um, so you what, once you start um, once you start figuring out what your um, what your profit is on your products. So let's talk about Amazon products, for example. And you have a financial goal, right? You can do things like if I sell my product for $50 and I have a 50% profit margin, meaning I have uh, $25 I make on each product, right? And I'm selling 100 units a day. How much is that? $2,500 net profit a day, right? What if I sell it for 40? What's my profit? $15. That doesn't sound very good, right? But what if I can sell 200 units a day? Is that better? Because that's three thousand instead of twenty five hundred, right? So should you do that? Right. So if you have the money to keep the inventory going, right? Because one of the things you don't want to do is run out of inventory and then make no money, right? There are lots. There are different things, but very. Let's just keep it to the basics. Would you do that? Yes. Then you consider other things in your business. But would you do that? Yes. So you got to know the numbers. So one of the things John might do is drop his price from $30 to $25 at some point. Maybe. Maybe, he's, maybe he'll raise his price. What if I could raise it instead of $50? What if I was selling for $60? Now I'm making $35 for each. And I, it only dropped to like 90 sales. Somebody did the math on that for me, right? 90 sales times $35. 3150 thank you. He made less sales and made more money. That's a good thing, right? So I, I wrote a whole little PDF. How many of you read it on, on calculating profit margins and stuff like that? And I covered some of these examples. If you haven't, go to the Facebook group, go to the Files tab, and look for the PDF on profit margins. OK? All right, questions, more questions. Somebody had a question over here and over there, over here. So uh, it sounds like it's 
easier to follow this strategy if you have a product going and you are trying to stick with your sales on an operation day-to-day -day, uh, level. But what if you're trying to like launch a new product and you don't see the results in like the next two weeks? Right. So sounds like yeah, sounds like the very first objection, right? What if you don't know? What if you don't have a product? What if you're just starting out? Think outside the box. You have a product in your hand. You have an inventory. You're ranking on page on page 59. You don't know how many sales you're going to get. You don't know if the Facebook strategy is going to work. You don't know anything. What do you know? What do you know? You have a product, and you, you know how much it costs you, and you have a number you have to hit. Go figure it out. Can you call some friends like John did? All right. There's step one right there, right? You, would you be willing to go to a swap meet, say a product, or a flea market? Definitely. There you go. So he knows he can do that. And then he'll make some sales, and then he'll figure out if it's worth him doing it. And if it's worth him doing it, but he doesn't want to do it, what does he do? He hires somebody to go do it. And then he can figure out, well, I made 100 bucks. It cost me 50 bucks to have this kid sit there all day and sell my stuff. Is it worth it? Yes, 50 bucks he made now without having to do anything, right? Don't be too proud to make money. Can you, can you folks like, agree that you won't be too proud to make money? You will evaluate every opportunity for its own merit without emotions, just looking at the number. Who will do that? Every hand. Every hand. Come on. Don't be shy. We've still got proud people in the room. <laughs> so if you get that through, seriously, if you let that sink in and you start believing that in your heart, that you can forecast, you can create a plan that will make you succeed, it will happen as long as you're committed to that plan. And I've hinted at some of the side benefits. If you have a plan for 30 days, everything you have to do for 30 days, John, are you going to get on our next webinar that we're going to pitch the next great product if you're not done with your number yet for today? You can get your number done. If your plan was to call two friends or call X number of friends to make two sales, are you going to go focus on Facebook ads that day? No, you're going to focus on calling your friends. You do the most important things first. Everything that is on your plan. Okay, so any more questions on this topic? So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you homework. Jason already told you, you've got to plan 2014. You have to plan what your number is going to be for 2014. And then I want you to back that into numbers, monthly numbers. However, when you back into monthly numbers, be aware that you can't just, let's say it was $120,000. It doesn't make sense to break it up into $10,000 a month because they, month one you may not be able to do that, right? So you're going to have to ramp it up. So I need you to start thinking about how you're going to ramp it up, right? So don't focus too much, though, on three months from now or four months from now what that number is going to be. I want you to focus on the plan on how you're going to achieve the specific number for that month. And I want you to get into the habit of planning the specifics for the following month around the 15th of the month. So around the 15th of February, John, you'll be planning all of March. And by planning March, I mean specifics what you're going to do. And that, may plan, that plan can be tweaked all the way until the end of February. But you've got to have your first draft of your plan that is realistic with numbers attached to them the first draft around the 15th, 16th of February. Deal? Awesome. Okay. And John lives in my hometown, so I'll go slap him around if he doesn't do it. He knows I will. All right. So, any more questions on this concept? No questions. All right. So, plan, plan your year, plan your month, plan your action plan for the very next month, and go do it. Get rid of the pride when it comes to making money. You're in business to make money. Period. You're in business to make money. Is there anybody who wants to build a business and is not interested in making money in this room? Just checking. Some people are all about passion and loving this and disseminating you know, their, their widget or their, you know, their gift to the world, right? None of us here is about that, right? We're about making money. Is that right? Good. All right. So, 
Yes, question. Yes, I asked about objections. And the one that um, that I'm struggling with is finding the time when I'm working another regular job. Uh huh. So okay. that I come home. I know that I know about scheduling just a little bit of time each day to do at least one thing every day. But it's hard when you come home and you're tired and just do that one thing. So any suggestions on how people have split up that activity? Excellent. Work? I have found. So the the question it wasn't very loud. So the question was the uh, time. You have a, uh, you have a full time job. You get home. You're tired. How do you find time to do this stuff? I have found that you will never in your life, I'll speak for myself, I will never in my life have free time for anything. When I was, in, when I was a junior in college, I took a full-time job. I landed this great opportunity. I was making a great salary for, you know, for a 20-year-old kid. I was making back in the, gosh, like early 90s, I was making $35,000 a, a year. I wasn't even a college graduate yet. I was 20 years old. I was styling, right? But I had to work full time. So I work full time. Uh, I work from 6:30 in the morning to 3:30 in the afternoon, and I went to school from 4 to 10 every day because I got in my mind that I was going to graduate from college in four years. There was no way I was going to allow myself to go four and a half, five. I got into my mind that I was going to do it in four years. So I worked my butt off. I had classes that met at the same time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I'd go to one on Tuesdays and the other on Thursdays. And I'd borrow notes from other people to study, right? I had the best grades ever that year when I did that because I was so focused on the stuff that I was going to do. And so in my mind, I was thinking, boy, when this is over, I'm going to have so much free time. It's going to be awesome because I'm only going to have to do work. I don't have to do school anymore. So I'm going to have time for all these other activities. Do you think I ever had free time? No. You will fill your calendar. You will fill your day with whatever it is. You will never sit there and say, wow, I have free time, right? So you have to make time. And then I decided to go for more schooling. I was working full time. You know, I was making more money. I have a very res high responsibility type job. And I decided to go get a master's degree. Did I have time for that? No. I made time for it. Some things are going to have to give. Do you watch three TV shows that you really like? Maybe you should only watch two. You only have time for two. So there will be things in your life that are going to give. And that's just the way it is because you're not going to have more than 24 hours a day. And you just have to decide what those things are. You just have to, like, you know, you're going to keep your job because you've got to pay your bills for right now, right? And then you're going to put this next, and then the other things will come after that, and some things just won't happen, right? That's just the reality of it. So, you know, it, do you like to go to coffee on Sunday morning with your girlfriends? Well, maybe you can't do that for the next few months. You've got to step out away from that. There are a lot of things, if you evaluate your time, that I think you might be able to block out an hour here, an hour there. And very important to tie it back to this whole concept of the goal and the planning. It has to be realistic. If you only have three hours a week to work on this stuff, then your plan has to reflect only those three hours a week, right? You can't call a hundred friends in one hour. It's not possible. So in one hour, if you can only call five friends, that's a realistic goal. Five friends that you can call, not a oh. hundred. The simplest thing to do is say, what are you doing with your time right now in your business, and what's the least effective use of your time? Take that, eliminate it, and replace this with that time instead. So we bump it up. We take the worst thing and replace it with the best thing. That's what you do. So you don't have to make new time. Just better use the time you already have. Mm -hmm. Attend one less webinar. Read 10 more, less 10 read 10 emails less, spend less time on Facebook. There's a lot of things that we don't want to give up. And we don't even think about, actually, that those things take time, but they do take a lot of time. 14 days without my, my mobile phone. I just went. 14 days 14 without days, mobile phone. 14 days. Just got it back yesterday. But I tell him that is not a great accomplishment for him because he never answers his phone anyway. <laughs> so that's only a tiny accomplishment. If it was me, on the other hand, I couldn't go 14 days. <laughs> I couldn't go 14 hours without my phone in my pocket. Yes. Oh, thank you. You've made it abundantly clear that we're to set our goals and do whatever's necessary to achieve them. 
at some point in your last three years, um, I'm sure that you underestimated. So we're never to bring our goal down. Have you ever mid-year raised it? Um, so the question is, have we ever, have we ever um, over, oh, you heard the question. Sorry, you have the mic. Um, so the question is, yes, sometimes we've, we've set a goal and we met it very quickly. So very early on, what we decided to do is we always wanted to grow our business on a, very, a fairly straight line. We wanted to consistently grow our business. We didn't want a business that was like, oh my God, we made a million dollars. Next month we made a hundred thousand. Oh my God, we made three million dollars. Next month we made a hundred thousand. We wanted to make, we have consistent growth and a nice track record in their business. There are a lot of reasons for that. Operationally speaking, to support this up and down thing is very difficult. Um, have you ever heard of people's PayPal accounts being shut down, right? Because they launched a product and they made too much money and like, what's this? Right? So we don't want to just toss a million dollars in our first month to PayPal when our metric is 100. I want to go 100, 120, 150, 200, 250, right? So I want to grow like that. So very early on we decided that this was going to be our growth path in our business. And there were months, there was a particular month, I remember we reached our metric on like the 11th of the month. What do we do? Go make a hell of a lot more money? No. What we did is we decided to work on our business fix the things that are broken, build new systems, create new infrastructures, experiment with things. Oh, let me do this new, let me, let's play with AdWords, Jason. We have two, a, a full week, we've already made our number, let's play with AdWords. Let's learn about AdWords. Yeah, that's how I discovered Facebook in the first place, the advertising secrets that I learned with that extra time left over in the yeah. month after we made our number already. That's why I'm saying when you have a plan, you focus on that plan. Now, it might be really cool to get a day or two ahead of plan. That's really cool, and, and you can do it, and I, by all means, do it. But um, set aside time to work on those other things that you can learn that are then next month going to help you or the month after that going to help you. The experimentation stuff, the stuff that we do, like kind of let's toss it out there and pray, you've got to still do some of that. Right, but you do it after you achieve your number. Did that answer your question? The other yeah. thing is you want to plan to grow too. So if I say, great, I can handle a hundred thousand dollars this month, and I have a whole bunch of customers, right? Could I handle twice that amount? No, I don't have the infrastructure to support that. So since we have time left over, let's invest it and train up and teach a support staff. So that way, when we do double the business, we can easily handle it. Well, guess what hap happens psychologically, by the way, when you do that? it becomes easier for you to unconsciously move directly to doubling your business because you know that there's not going to be a problem doing that, right? Whereas before there's that uncertainty, oh my God, if I double my business, is everything going to fall apart? So you don't get too far ahead of the number. Instead, you prepare for that number to keep growing so you can meet it and be ready for it when it does grow. Yeah, and let's tie that directly back to the Amazon business, okay? You don't want to just blow out your sales and run out of inventory for a month because your supplier can't give you more inventory. So you want to have nice steady sales and you want to make sure your orders place and you're going to run out at a specific time, right? So you need to plan for that. By the way, this is going to become the challenge as you become successful with this business is inventory management. You need to know how many units your supplier can supply you because the, you, you can't just start selling a million units a month and expect your supplier to be able to provide you a million units a month. You need to, they have a maximum production capacity. Now, as we're just starting, none of us are going to be in that boat. Not a problem. But these are problems that you hope to have in the future. It's going to be a road bump for you. It's going to be a growth, um, a growth pain for you. Is my gosh, my supplier cannot give me enough units. So I'm losing money. So what am I going to do? I'm going to need to go find another supplier. Maybe I have two suppliers now supplying the same product or three suppliers supplying the same product, right? Nice problems to have, and we will all have them, right? Yeah. Yes, right? But do you understand why you, you can't just go like that in your business and then fall down and stuff? It's just not, it's not a, a realistic thing to do. It's not something you want to do. So that's what we do when we overachieve our goals. Is, uh, by the way, we don't stop promoting stuff, but maybe like in Rapid Crush, for example, I don't stop promoting from the 11th to the 30th. That would actually be a bad thing to do. But now I go back to those products that we know are not going to make a whole lot of money, but maybe they're going to get us leads. So now I'll go back to the $20, $30 products, or maybe you know I want to be nice to one of our affiliates who's helped us out a lot, 
We know their product isn't going to give us a lot of money, but I want to help them build their business. So I'm going to do a promotion for them. Maybe $5,000 in profit doesn't mean anything to us, but maybe to a, a starting out affiliate, it'll mean a lot. And it'll help them grow their business, which then helps them grow our business. So now we have the luxury to be able to do those things. That's what we do with, with after we've achieved our goals. We focus a lot more, not on the making money, but on the other stuff. Yes, question, Mike, over here. You've, you've been talking about the Facebook ads, but you haven't mentioned anything about the Google Plus that Jason's been talking about most of the week. Are you going to talk about that? <laughs> Jason, do you want to cover a little Google Plus this afternoon? I totally will, yeah. yeah. Now, by the way, most of the stuff for Amazon is largely theory that I'm going to be doing in 2014. So not much of it is tested specifically with Amazon physical products. But I will share with you my insights of what I think can But the Google Plus will work well with Amazon? Oh, it should. I mean, the Google Plus communities, how big are those and how many of them are there? And how few people are attaching themselves to a community and trying to market exclusively within that community, right? Nothing is easily more demonstrable on a Hangout than somebody using and doing your product, right? So I get Will on there, I start rubbing vitamin C on his, <laughs> all over him, right? Ooh, we're we're like going to sell like crazy. <laughs> so yeah, listen. remind me after lunch. I will, I will share with you what I'm planning to do personally with Google Plus in 2014 with Amazon specifically. That's what I wanted to know. Cool. And by the way, he's going to start doing that stuff on the extra time, right? Because we're going to do things that we already know work to get the product kick-started and to get the number of sales up and all that. Okay, all right, let's uh, move on to, I want to talk about, so we'll leave that aside. You're going to have 30 days of access to 6 and 6 coaching, no strings attached, okay? 30 days you have access to it. Um, I'll tell you how in the Facebook group uh, by Wednesday next week, okay? So just watch for that, and for those of you who are not members. And then I'll tell you which sessions to go watch, which go into a lot of detail, and you can use the comments in there, and we'll, we'll work through that. But please commit to doing this because you will not believe after you do this for a few months how incredible this is going to be for your business, for your success in the way that matters, which is the money stuff, right? Because business is about money. All right. So let's talk about ASM Ranker and uh, let's talk about ranking in general. We started talking about that uh, this afternoon. How many of you are using Ranker? Okay. How many of you have seen po very positive results from Ranker? Awesome. Okay. So the way that ASM teaches the, the whole process of ranking is, is you want to rank for keywords, right? How many of you watch your bestseller rank, which your bestseller rank is, your BSR? Stop doing it. It's a waste of time. Doesn't matter. It does not matter. You only, that's only an emotional, psychological, emotional things like, ooh, I'm number whatever, right? We are consistently number like, when we were making, when we're, our, our current product is seasonal, right? And we're in a very low season right now. But when we were in a high season and we're making really good money with that pr particular product every single day, our bestseller rank has never gone like above like 2,000 and something, ever. And we're the number one listing we were at that time for our main keyword. So it doesn't matter what your bestseller rank is at all. So stop looking at it. You want your keyword rankings because that's where your traffic is going to come from. They're not going to go to the category and start searching for the best seller. So give that up. So um, uh, rankings uh, are keyword driven. That's what we're focusing on. That's what ASM teaches us to do is to rank for specific keywords. And the reason we want to rank for keywords is because that's how people buy stuff on the AZ site, right? <laughs> that's how they go buy that on that particular site we want to list our stuff on. Um, so they go and search for vitamin C serum, and then they're going to see a whole bunch of listings, right? And then they're going to pick one of them. Hopefully ours is towards the top because the top set of listings is going to get more, more traffic. So the, the, uh, the ASM system is they've figured out and they taught us that the more times somebody searches for a particular keywords and for a particular keyword and buys your product, the better you will rank for that product as long as you convert well, right? Remember, conversion, conversion. You have to convert on a percentage basis very well. So we want to increase that. The ASM system teaches, well, go do the scavenger hunt, right? 
like you're on page 17, well, give them a picture and tell them to go find this picture and then give them the dollar coupon. So that was very painful. That was painful for me to do to find my product, and I had a motive for finding it. How nice is it to send a potential customer off of a Facebook ad or even your family to go, when I told my wife to go search for this thing because we didn't have the ranker tool, she was like, come on, really? She did three or four pages and says, here's a laptop. When you find it, give it back to me and I'll buy it. She did. I'm not kidding you, right? So we came up with this concept and we figured out how to simulate a keyword search that takes them directly to your listing. So creating an ASM ranker link will give you the equivalent result of having somebody search, find your product, and clicking on your listing. That's good, right? Single click, your listing, it looks like the keyword, research, the keyword searched it. So what's the thing that has to happen next? They have to buy. So somebody asked me in the Facebook group, I think it's somebody in this room, I don't remember who it was. Um, hey, I have a lot of friends that want to look at my listing. Can I give them my ASM ranker look? Oh, I'm outside the country, so my friends can't buy, but they want to see my listing. Can I give them my, AS, my ASM ranker link? What's the answer? No. no, you don't, because now they're going to click on it. It will look like they searched for your product, and they didn't buy. What does that do to your conversion? <whistles> Tanks it, right? So. You want to increase the conversions for particular keywords. And one of the things Jason taught you about this morning was that if you're going to use uncertain sources of traffic when it comes to conversion, you can stack the deck in your favor by weeding out the non-buyers ahead of the process before those conversion metrics start counting. So if you're going to do Facebook ads, you don't know exactly who is going to look at those things, at those ads and click on your, on your ad. So you send them to a landing page. Jason already explained the landing page tries to separate those that don't want to buy from those like, guy, I really want this. I'm going to click the buy button, right, and then be taken to my Amazon page. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do you send somebody to a listing to just look at it? What's the best way to send them to a listing to just look at it? What's that? Yeah, like give them the brand of your product, something like that. Is that okay to do? So one of the things Matt Clark taught me is like resist the temptation of showing off your product because we are thinking about keyword conversion, keyword conversion, keyword conversion, but there's also an overall conversion metric that they're keeping, every single visitor to that page. Keyword from what we understand of the algorithm. By the way, how many of you think Matt and Jason Katzenbach have been told, like, did, did, do they have inside information at Amazon? Somebody told them how their ranking algorithm works? No. Does anybody understand tr understands truly how Google's algorithm works, who doesn't work for Google? No. Those are trade secrets, right? So they are not going to be out there telling. What we're doing is from observation, from testing, we're extrapolating results and trying to figure out how it works. So they've figured out through a lot of testing, and this is what they teach in ASM, search for a keyword, click on the link, buy it, that's good. Search for a keyword, click on the link, don't buy it, bad, right? So, but the same goes, uh, is true, by the way, for any view on your listing. So as cool as it is to be out there just tossing your listing around, and having you know, people come look at it, as a, as a general rule, you don't want to do that either. I'll tell you that when people discovered what our product was, we were number one. Like within three or four days, that three or four days that it takes to, uh, for Amazon to react, we were number three. And then we were number four. And today we're number seven or eight, we were bouncing between seven and eight. Now, it's low season, we're not advertising, we're not doing anything. Around March, we will take that product and we'll put it back to the top three within a week. Yeah. 
So we will do that. We're, we don't care right now. There are a lot of people working and trying to compete for that. And there are a lot of ASMers trying to compete with that product. And they're like now number three, number four, number two. It's like, OK, don't worry about it. We know it's coming. They're not making real money right now because it's low season. So the keyword searches aren't helping a whole lot. That's OK. But does that make sense? You need to be concerned about conversions. But you need to be very concerned, very concerned about keyword traffic conversion. So you want to, ASM Ranker is a, is a very powerful tool. You just have to use it carefully. Does that make sense? Any questions about ASM Ranker? Yes, minders, we'll get you the microphone in just a second. Is anybody dying to know how it works? OK, you know how it works. Oh, right, don't worry about how it works. It just works. See, those are the things you shouldn't concern yourself with. It works. People are proving it in the group all the time. OK, so I'm going to address this question. Is Amazon going to find out and flag you? Maybe. Should you care about it right now? It works right now. If Facebook ads work right now, should I worry about whether Facebook is going to be in business three years from now or whether Google Plus is going to out outrun them? No. You're going to adapt as you go, as you go forward, right? Penalize it? Well, I don't right now, no. Could they? Possibly. And if, if we discover that that's the case, we will tell you, stop using it. Have you lost anything? Like if you stop it, like if by using it now, if it's working? No. If it's working, do it. When it stops working, we'll find out. And then we'll tell you, stop using it. And we'll hopefully try and come up with a different method. The point is you have it now. And now we'll repeat it. And I've said it several times, but I know some of you are not active in Facebook enough. And I've tried, I've write, wrote, written so many posts. Please do not talk about this tool outside of our group. You're going to be meeting with another 900 ASMers potentially the rest of this week. Do not mention the name of this tool. Do not talk about it. It is a competitive advantage that we have against the other 900 people, 10 of which may be competing against you with, for the same product. So don't try and be this nice person and share this stuff with them. Forget nice, this is business. I'm serious, right? And if we find out that you know people are talking about it, they're going to be removed from our group, and I don't want to do that. Because we have more stuff that's coming. We're not done with this group yet, folks. <laughs> we got more stuff. We're not kidding that we are just we're focusing on this business. We will have a million dollar business based upon this one site I'm not supposed to mention the name of because uh, they get mad at me. Um, <laughs> we'll have a million dollar business in 13 months and we're going to let you watch how we do it. Right? We're going to tell you the strategies that we're using. Right? So we want to remain a very, very cohesive focus group but we got to keep the stuff to ourselves. Okay? All right. One, one last thing too about getting caught on the Ranker tool. The way I look at it is like this. If Amazon hasn't plugged the hole of people being able to hijack your listing or arbitrage your listing and sell it at five times the price, then we're probably low on the list of things that they're concerned about when there's 500 other broken things that are probably more pressing. So don't worry about it. Yeah. And Will, can okay. I ask my I, question to Minder, sorry. No problem. Uh, in the training on the tool, you mentioned that there's some advanced techniques on I, uh, let's say you have a lot of content out and you wanted to focus all the traffic to move a particular keyword up. So specifically with, let's say you have a lot of press releases and YouTube videos out. Um, could you use this to have, you know, all of those links going to your ASM ranker tool? You know, you have a cloaked link and, and right now you're trying to move up in keyword A. So everything points to, to ASM ranker. And, and for okay. those tools specifically, would you advise that? Yeah. So um, multi-part answer here. First, I would not put the ASM rank, ranker link directly. And if we pointed to that specifically in the training, it was a, a, slight miss, uh, a slightly incorrect explanation. But there are other ways to do it. For example, you can use, some people have asked me, like, hey, can I use the, can I use a redirect link from some other redirect script that inside my ASM ranker link that then I can track more metrics on and more statistics, more analytics and stuff? 
Yes, you can just do it backwards. So the ASM ranker link, when you build it, you have to give it the Amazon search URL that where you found your product. You have to go find your listing and do it exactly how we taught you. But the link you post on a press release, the link you post on a blog post, the link you post somewhere else, could be a redirect link that then points to your ranker link, which then will take you to your listing. Does that make sense? Then you can have whatever analytics you want, you can have whatever. But based upon the things that we explained it today, or that we explained today, should you go even do that? Or should you take some of that traffic and send it to a landing page potentially? I think we need to probably cover some more of these strategies and we'll do it in the group through discussions. But I think you should apply the same type of concept that we just talked about with maybe an in-between page to make sure your conversions don't tank. Certain traffic is going to be very good traffic. You will start learning what traffic is good by tracking your conversions, like your coupon codes, how many, how many clicks did I have and how many you know, sales did it generate. That's the most basic metric you can have, right? And you're gonna see that some sources of traffic are really good. How many of you have ever bought uh, solo ads? Are all solo ad providers the same? No. Some of them send really good traffic that converts, and some of them send really junky traffic, right? Some send fake traffic, right? So if you get, if you send, you know, uh, if, you, if you get clicks from a weight loss magazine versus uh, uh, clicks from a, you know, a, a car and driver magazine for a beauty product, right? What traffic is better? More likely to convert, right? If your ad is really nice and it makes sense, whatever. So uh, traffic by itself just doesn't mean a whole lot. It's the quality of the traffic. And so I think the best thing to do is to come up with a strategy where you do have some kind of in-between page for each one of your offers that explains what the offer is, maybe explains what the product is, maybe talks about all the benefits and has the headline and everything else with an add cart button at the bottom that is only really going to be clicked when somebody's truly interested in buying. You know? But should you also drive some traffic directly to your listing? Yeah, affiliates will. Potentially, if they're affiliates, uh, uh, Amazon affiliates promoting your, your offer. So it's not going to be perfect. Don't freak out on like, oh my god, I'm not going to send any, any one click to this one thing, right? Traffic is good. Overall, it's going to help you, right? But be aware when you do these specific strategies related to ASM Ranker that you should uh, send the most qualified traffic you possibly can. Now, am I telling you to just like not ever use it until you've tested the traffic and do all that stuff? Find a middle ground, you know? Find a middle ground. Are you, if you're going to take two weeks to create a landing page, so that you can protect your ranker link, then I say that's probably not worth it for a product starting out. Just toss the traffic at it. You don't look for perfection here, but just understand the process. Okay. Um, this is regarding your um, comment about your current product. What is your plan to take it from seven to three in a short time? Ah. We're gonna go. We're gonna go and lose some money again on Facebook ads. We're gonna start as if it was a brand new listing. We'll just toss money at it, do it real quick, and get back. And then at that point, but see, we're gonna do it very strategically because we already have for that particular product. We have history. We know when it sells well and when it doesn't sell well. So I know that if I spend a whole bunch of money right now on advertising and give you know a hundred units away for a dollar. It's going to take me a long time to get that money back in organic sales. So I'm not really going to get a whole lot of being number one right now. Why is that the seasonality? Because of the seasonality of the product, yeah. So being number one right now, if you're only relying on Amazon traffic, organic traffic, right, it just doesn't sell a whole lot. What we're getting right now are repeat customers pretty much, customers that are using our consumable product that are coming back to buy more and more bottles of our product. That's pretty much what we're getting. Yes, Quest, uh, we have a question over there.
Um, once your product is, mine's on the bottom of page one, once it moves up to hopefully one on that page, do you recommend stop using the your linker link? So once it gets to the number one page, would you recommend uh, not using Ranker anymore? I would focus my Ranker traffic on other keywords. Find your next keyword and switch all the links over everywhere to the different keyword. Does it hurt or benefit anything? As long as you're consistently sending uh, targeted traffic to that specific keyword uh, and it's converting well, as long as it's helping your conversion metrics, it's always helpful. Always helpful. Yes, question. One second, we'll get you the mic. Are you guys planning on continuing uh, showing off your vitamin C serum? Yes. Like, uh, are we conti are we what you're continue doing with showing that? it off? Yeah. So if anybody wants to see the bottle, I actually brought the bottle um, with me. So just find me at a break or something. I'll show you the bottle. Uh, we slowed down significantly over the holidays. And we did so many other things in the group that we hadn't planned on doing, like the other re extra reports that we wrote and um, you know, the extra trainings that we did, that we actually fell behind. We ran out of time. So we're behind schedule on that. But uh, we've sourced the product now. Uh, we've placed the order. It will be ready to ship uh, on Monday. And then we're going to start kicking the pro kick starting the process with Facebook ads very quickly. So yes, you will have the, com the complete follow along like we promised. All right, so I think uh, let's do lunch. Uh, it is five to one. How about we come back at uh, two thirty? Is that good? A little over an hour and a half. All right. Uh, and by the way, if you have questions about any of the stuff we've covered, we are going to be here all weekend, like you folks are. So feel free to come up to us and ask us questions, ask clarifying questions. You know, other questions that we may not have covered. We're here and we love to talk and share this stuff. So, all right.